Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Under the direction of the First Presidency and Council of the Twelve, presents the first vision, the visitation of the Father and the Son to Joseph Smith. From the beginning of the world's history, God has communicated with mankind. The men he chose to receive his direct words were called prophets. During the several hundred years following the Savior's ministry, there was darkness and apostasy from Christ's teachings. But then God once again chose to reveal himself to mankind. The revelation came in answer to a humble prayer by a 14-year-old boy named Joseph Smith in the year 1820 near Palmyra, New York. This is the story of the visit of God the Father and Jesus Christ to the boy prophet, Joseph. When Joseph was 14 years old, there was a lot of excitement about religion in the area where he lived. Many different churches were involved, trying many different ways to convert the people to the doctrines they taught. The whole area seemed affected by this religious excitement, and numerous people joined the various churches, which caused great commotion and division among the people. As some declared, the truth is here, and others declared, the truth is there. The scriptures in the Bible were interpreted differently by the various preachers, and there was much discussion about who was right. Joseph was interested in joining a church and visited many of the different churches trying to find if one was right. But the churches disagreed and contradicted each other, and it seemed impossible for him to make a decision. During this time of great excitement, Joseph thought deeply about religion, and his mind was troubled as he considered that all the churches could not be right since they taught so many different things. God could not be responsible for so much confusion. Joseph determined to investigate the subject more completely. He studied the Bible and wondered why the churches differed so much in what they taught. If the truth was in the Bible, why did the preachers interpret the same scripture to mean so many different things? And if there is only one Lord and one faith and one baptism, as the scriptures state, then why were there so many different churches? There was so much confusion and strife among the different churches that it was impossible for a person as young and unlearned as Joseph Smith to decide who was right and who was wrong. His feelings were deep and often intense, but still he did not join any of the churches, though he often attended their meetings. While Joseph struggled under the extreme difficulties caused by the contests of these religious groups, he read in the Bible the fifth verse of the first chapter of James. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Never did any passage of Scripture more powerfully affect a person than this did Joseph at this time. 
It seemed to enter with great force and great feeling into his heart. He thought about it again and again, knowing that if any person needed wisdom from God, he did. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. In faith. To ask God with real faith, that was what he must do. In accordance with his determination to ask of God, he went to the woods to try. It was on the morning of a beautiful, clear day, early in the spring of 1820. After he had come to the place he had previously decided to go, and having looked around him and finding himself alone, he kneeled down and began to express the desires of his heart to God. He had scarcely begun when he was seized upon by some power which entirely overcame him. and had such an astonishing influence over him as to bind his tongue so that he could not speak. Thick darkness gathered around him, and it seemed to him for a time as if he were doomed to sudden destruction. At the very moment when Joseph was ready to sink into despair and abandon himself to destruction, He saw a pillar of light exactly over his head. At that moment, Joseph was freed from the enemy which held him bound. The light descended gradually until it fell upon him. When the light rested upon him, Joseph saw two personages whose brightness and glory were too bright to describe, standing above him in the air. One of them spake unto Joseph, called him by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son. Hear him. As soon as Joseph recovered sufficiently so that he could speak, he asked the personages which of all the churches he should join. He was told that he must join none of them, for they were all wrong, and none of them was acknowledged by God as his church and kingdom. Joseph was commanded not to join any church but at the same time, he received a promise that the fullness of the gospel should at some future time be restored to the earth through him. Joseph had actually seen a light and in the midst of that light, he had seen two personages, and they did in reality speak to him. And though he was hated and persecuted for saying that he had seen a vision, yet it was true. He knew it, and he knew God knew it, and he could not deny it. 
Once again, the Lord had spoken to a prophet. He had spoken to Joseph, just as he had spoken to Adam, Abraham, Moses, Paul, and others. Through his prophet Joseph, and through that first vision and the revelations that followed, the gospel and true church of Jesus Christ was restored in its fullness to the earth.